Hello everybody and welcome back to the longly awaited return of the League One transfer rumour roundup. The transfer window is well and truly open for this summer and that only means one thing. It is time to bring back this series and talk about all of the latest completed deals and the latest rumours surrounding League One clubs and their transfer business. As always with this series, I got this inspiration from the legend that is Ben HD. He of course does the Championship Transfer in a Roundup and I've taken a lot of inspiration from him for this series to cover the deals done in League One. If you'd like to check out Ben's series, I'll leave a link to his latest video. It's absolutely brilliant top quality stuff and yeah without any further hesitation people let's dive straight into it because we have got a lot to discuss but before we go into the rumours let's talk about some of the big completed deals that have gone through in the last couple of days and we begin with perhaps the biggest one so far in Cole Stockton his future has been confirmed and he has signed for Burton Albion following his release from Morecambe at the end of last season Quite surprised by this one. I must say, I was quite surprised Burton were able to pick this guy up considering the amount of interest that he no doubt would have been having and would have been attracting interest from a number of other bigger clubs. But he's opted to join Burton, so fair play to Burton for getting that deal over the line. A very, very solid signing for them. We know how good Stockton can be at this level from his goals that he has scored with Morecambe. Derby County have begun their transfer business in the last 24 hours and have really built themselves a good stepping stone towards their title push this season with three new recruits. The first one being Peterborough United, wingback Joe Ward on a free transfer. The Englishman will join the club upon the expiration of his contract at the start of July from the posh and will head to Pride Park. Great signing for this one on a free transfer. Really, really good pickup for Derby. He's been a player that I've rated very highly in the last couple of seasons in League One. He's a player that likes to push forward and come back on the defensive, gets goals and assists. Rather interestingly though, Derby typically play a back four, I do believe, so it's going to be interesting to see how he fares as a more, I guess, some natural right back when I would say he's more effective as a wing back. And Derby also completed the side signings of goalkeeper Josh Vickers and most recently I think actually today the left back Callum Elder from Hull City so some very smart bits of business there on a free transfer and like I said some good cover there and have really built themselves a good stepping block towards their title push this season no doubt they'll be up there and Reading have confirmed the departure of George Puskas on a permanent transfer the Romanian has signed for Italian first division side Genoa he spent last season on loan with the Italian side and helped them get promoted from the Serie B scoring four goals in 25 appearances I think we all saw this one come and he was never going to really stay at League One level. And I have no doubt that Puskas won't be the last one to leave the Royals this summer, especially with the current financial situation they find themselves in. But there are some of the completed deals that have gone through in League One. I'm not going to mention all of them because I am quite late for this series. I do apologise for that, but I will be going through all of them in the next episode that do go through from now until the next one. But without any further hesitation, it is now time to get in to the transfer rumours. And we begin with a bit of managerial news as Barnsley manager Michael Duff is close to becoming the new Swansea manager. Of course, as most of us will know over the last couple of weeks, Swansea's current manager, Russell Martin, has been linked with the vacant Southampton job. It's kind of hit a bit of a, a stumbling block at the moment. I don't, I, I can't really remember what's been going on with it, but I know that there's still talks and it's still very likely to happen. And Michael Duff looks set to be Swansea's replacement. Duff has obviously been brilliant over the last couple of years in League One, has really been progressing well in his managerial career, did fantastic at a job at Cheltenham Town, was a key factor and a very influential figure in them staying up in League One in their first season. And then he, of course, took the Barnsley job where obviously he did very well. He managed to get them into the playoffs with a storming run in the second half of the season. Unfortunately, missed out on promotion in the worst way possible in the dying embers of extra time to Sheffield Wednesday. I think this would be a good little pickup for Swansea. It's a good chance for Duff to test himself at a higher level, obviously, like I said, has done a fantastic job at League One level. Obviously, for Barnsley, very big loss considering the job that he's done last season and they'll obviously be looking to replace him very swiftly. Off the top of my head right now with Darren Moore's departure from Sheffield Wednesday, a very shocking departure as well. You'd imagine he'd be one of the one of the first names on that list of potential candidates for him to replace. So yeah, Duff, massive loss for Barnsley if this is to go through, but it looks very likely that he will be becoming the Swansea boss replacing Russell Martin. These two deals may well have gone through by the time this video comes out, but Bolton Wanderers are set to complete the double signing of Bristol City wingback Kane Wilson and Tranmere Rovers fullback Josh Cogley. Two pretty decent bits of business there, in my opinion, especially Kane Wilson coming over from Bristol City. Now, obviously, he's had quite a torrid time at the Robins since making his move from Forest Green last season. Obviously, was fantastic for Forest Green in their promotion season to League One. Obviously, left them to sign for the Championship for a compensation fee. I think they got him on a free transfer. He turned down a contract to Forest Green to join Bristol City. Um, the League One side 
side got a compensation fee out of it. There was a lot of hype surrounding that transfer, and despite a very solid preseason, Wilson only managed five appearances in the championship. Obviously, there was a lot of factors. He suffered with injury, uh, the form of other players in his position, and there was a system change midway through the season with Nigel Pearson and things like that. So he has fallen very much out of favour, and reportedly, Bolton are set to sign him for a six-figure sum. I think, despite a very torrid time in the championship, I think he is a very capable player, or should be a very capable player at League One level. Obviously, he would come in as Connor Bradley's replacement. Obviously, he had a fantastic spell last season with Bolton uh, on loan from Liverpool. Really, really good debut, debut season as well in professional football, I do believe. And I think Wilson would come in as a solid replacement. And as for Josh Cogley, again, another player in the same position, I think would offer some decent cover for Wilson. He featured in every game in League Two for Tranmere last season. One one goal, four assists, an average match rating of 6.79. Barnsley defender Mads Anderson is in talks with a move to Premier League debutants Luton Town, which sounds just so crazy to say even now that Luton will be competing in the Premier League. But this transfer is an interesting one. I wouldn't have thought that Anderson would be attracting Premier League interest, nor do I think that... This is, I, I, I mean, I mean, when the Premier League move comes knocking, you're not really going to turn it down. But I must admit, I'm quite surprised to see Anderson linked with a Premier League move. That being said, he is a very consistent performer for Barnsley and has been a pretty solid rock in their defensive line. The season just gone, averaged a match rating of 7.8, averaged one per tackle per 90, 1.7 interceptions, 4.6 clearances per 90. Standing at six foot four as well, so very dominant in the air, very commanding in the defensive line. And if Barnsley are to lose him alongside Michael Duff, their manager. That's two big losses for their side going into the season. For Luton, be an interesting signing to see how he does. The jump from League One to the Premier League is quite tough. And obviously, Luton will be looking to sign anyone they can get, really, as they'll be looking to main maintain their Premier League status come next season. So, very interesting one, this one. I'll be keeping tabs on this one for sure. It wouldn't be a Transfer Rumour Roundup episode if I didn't discuss my wonderful club, Charlton Athletic. And, of course, the biggest transfer rumour that has been going on at Charlton, or one of the many few that's been going on at Charlton, because we haven't been linked with many players this summer but the biggest one of all of them is of course Cheltenham striker Alfie May now of course the Gloucestershire live journalist John Palmer did report that Charlton had a fee agreed for the striker but Richard Cawley came out and said that that wasn't the case but talks were still ongoing he is out of contract at the end of next season so and there has been a lot of clubs interested Millwall and Wrexham previously were interested Derby County I think remain interested and obviously Charlton have thrown their hat in the ring but a club that has recently uh, shown their interest in the striker is Gillingham who have very recently strengthened their interest in the striker and are looking set to try and get a deal done now I think we all saw this one coming in terms of May leaving Cheltenham as I said he wants to test himself at a higher level and if Cheltenham are to lose him which I think they are all but prepared to lose him it's a catastrophic loss for them. He's been absolutely superb in League One the last couple of seasons. He's not only been getting double figures, but he's been getting 20-plus goals in both seasons for Cheltenham. Last season got 20. I think the season before that, 22. I'm not sure, 23. For Cheltenham, I think it would be a real statement of intent, a really, really solid signing. But I'm not really that confident in us getting a deal done because, obviously, we are pending a takeover. Things are going to take a lot longer than usual. And right now, Thomas Sangard is still in control of transfers and the finances and Martin Sangard and Steve Gallen are still our recruitment team and if you would have seen for the past couple of years those two have completely failed us to bring in solid players to the club for the past two seasons really. For Derby County again I think May would be quite a natural replacement for David McGoldrick who obviously has joined Notts County on a free joining his boyhood club to retire there so May would come in as a very natural and solid replacement. Gillingham with their recent takeover with Brad Gallinson they're obviously, their budget will obviously be quite more um substantial than other teams in League 2. Obviously, they very recently just signed Johnny Williams, which is a great signing for a League 2 level. So it's going to be very interesting to see where May ends up, but there's no doubt about it, he won't be playing for Cheltenham. But Cheltenham do look set to bring in a new forward option, as it looks like they have won the race to sign Crystal Palace youngster Rob Street on a permanent contract. He, of course, spent, I believe, the second half of last season on loan at Lincoln City, where he did all right with four goals for them in the second half of the season. He was used at times as a winger, but is best utilised as that number nine. Still got time on his side, you know, 21 years of age, six foot two, so could work out for Cheltenham, could be an interesting signing, but yeah, upon first glance with the player that they look set to lose. 
you'd have to say at right now it would be a downgrade. Going back to my club, Cholton Athletic, and we are reportedly prepared to listen to offers for goalkeeper Joe Wallacott with the player reportedly looking to get regular minutes this season as he looks to keep his spot in the Ghana national team. Now, obviously, that is understandable. That is understandable because Wallacott at the moment is our number two to Ashley Maynard Barat. Obviously, he came in in the summer of last season as Ben Garner's choice of goalkeeper. 16 games in League One last season, obviously, was our number one for the start of the season up until his injury before the World Cup, which obviously he missed out on. If it wasn't for that injury, I've said it multiple times on the channel in previous videos, I still hold the opinion that he would still be our number one keeper today. But ever since then, he's not played a single minute since his injury with Maynard Brewer now being the number one. And I'll be honest with you, I don't understand this one whatsoever. I don't know why we're looking to let him go. Obviously, the article did report, the South London Press did report that we don't really care what happens. We don't mind if he stays, but we also don't mind if he leaves. Now, as I said, I understand Wallacott wanting to get regular minutes and maintain his spot in an international football team. But that being said, I don't know why we keep cutting and changing goalkeepers because it's very rare when a team has two able goalkeepers at League One level and this is the time where we have it. You know, we have two very decent keepers at this level and we'd be stupid to let Wallacott go. I'm not too sure how concrete this rumour is, but I had to discuss it because I was so taken aback by it. But Leighton Orient goalkeeper Lawrence Vigarou, who had been linked with Cholton, but that rumour was debunked, is reportedly in advanced talks to join Burnley. Now, it's... <laughs> Again, I don't know how concrete this is. I have seen it a couple of times, but... I was very, very surprised to see this one go through, but I think with this rumour, it is obviously a massive, massive loss to Leighton Orient if they are to lose Vigarou. Reportedly, he's also attracting championship interest, but it has been reported on multiple different platforms that he is in advanced talks to join Vincent Company's side in the Premier League. Obviously, his stats for last season, 24 clean sheets in 45 games in League, in League 2 last year in Orient's title-winning season, a 74% save success rate, an average of 0 0.67 goals conceded per 90. So he has been a massively influential figure in between the post for Leighton Orient over the last couple of years. And if they are to lose him, which I would say is very likely amidst a lot of interest, it's a massive loss for them and a huge hole to fill in their squad. Portsmouth have been a club that have been very active so far in the opening week of the transfer window, but literally about 15 minutes ago at the time of recording, there's been some massive breaking news as the Irish international Ronan Curtis has turned down Pompey's new contract offer. Now, obviously, Curtis is out of contract in the summer and was offered a new deal alongside Jay Mingi. His future is still undetermined at this point, as far as I'm aware, but literally coming out at the moment, Curtis releasing a statement on Twitter saying that he has turned down Pompey's offer for now. So it's still very much up in the air. We don't really know what his future is going to be. There has been a lot of interest from other championship clubs. Bristol City, Blackburn and Cardiff have been interested in the past, but his Pompey future is still very much undecided. We don't know what's going to happen with him. He may not be leaving Pompey just yet. Of course, he is recovering from an ACL injury and looks set to be out probably until the new year. So he's going to miss a lot of next season anyway. And the thing with Curtis is he is a very able player at League One level. He's a player that I have very much admired. Last season obviously didn't work out as he has suffered an ACL injury for midway through the season. 25 appearances, two goals, zero assists. But you just have a look at his statistics from the previous few years and you can only say how good of a player he is. A championship move has been on the cards for him and it's been discussed for a few years now. His future is still very much up in the air and we don't really know where it's going to end up, but latest reports from the player himself is that he has turned down the Pompey move for now. As previously mentioned, Pompey have been very busy in the transfer window so far, bringing in five new recruits in the opening week and they don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon as they are keeping up their interest in a number of players. One of those players being Cardiff City winger Gavin White, who of course very recently just left the club on a free transfer following the expiration of his contract. This one would make a lot of sense as he had previously played at Oxford United with obviously Pompey manager John Massinho. His best spell in League One level was with Oxford 2018-19, three goals, seven assists in 36 games. And he did have another spell at Oxford the previous season. So the one just gone, 37 games, one goal, 10 assists. And he also has previous experience at League One level with Hull City, where he was part of their title winning side under Grant McCann. White has struggled to stick it in the championship with just 14 games this season, one goal, one assist. With that John Massinho connection from playing with each other at Oxford, you probably would have to say that this one is very likely. Massinho speaks very highly of him, so it will be interesting to see where this one unfolds. Pompey do need to strengthen the out wide options, obviously releasing Michael Jacobs and obviously Ronan Curtis's situation still being very much up in the air. They did recently sign Anthony Scully from Wigan, which I think is a great signing. And another player Portsmouth are keen on is centre-back Deshaun Bernard, who of course spent the second half of last season on loan with the club from Manchester United. The 
Pendart has since left Old Trafford on a free transfer and very much impressed in his time at Fratton Park. 10 appearances, 7 starts, 3 off the bench, an average of 1.2 tackles per 90, 2 interceptions, 3 clearances per 90, an average match rating of 6.78 and at 22 years old would definitely offer some cover and some pretty solid cover. Peterborough United midfielder Jack Taylor is attracting interest from championship clubs. Bristol City and Ipswich were the two clubs interested in the midfielder. However, today it has been reported that Ipswich have ended their interest in the midfielder. Taylor is a player that I do rate very highly. He's just come off his best goal scoring season to date or best goal contributing season to date with nine goals and six assists in 46 games. An average match rating of 7.16. So he has been a very influential figure to Peterborough's midfield and a big part of the side that got them into the playoffs, obviously in that dramatic playoff semi-final against Sheffield Wednesday. I, I am worried about Peterborough going into the season with them obviously losing Joe Ward and Johnson Clark Harris being up for transfer as well with their, uh, if a player is out of contract in 12 months, they get put on the transfer list policy. And with Jack Taylor now attracting interest as well, they could definitely be set to lose a lot of their key assets this season. And Taylor is one that they should be looking to keep hold of. Like I said, a massive influential figure in the middle of that park and gets forward and gets goals and assists. Bristol City being interested would be a great little signing for City. And Taylor is not the only club that Bristol City and Ipswich are interested in, as the two are also interested in Derby County midfielder Jason Knight. Now, Knight is a player that I'd have rated very highly ever since he came through the academy ranks at Derby back in the championship season where Charlton were in in 2019-20. Only 20, still only 22 years of age, a Republic of Ireland international, played 38 games last season for Derby, getting two goals and three assists. A very, very versatile player as well, can play sort of anywhere in the middle and also can play right back. According to statistics, his best position by rating was as the deep lying midfielder or defensive midfielder, but he was played, as I said, in a variety of positions. He made the most amount of his appearances in the attacking midfield position or in the centre but as I said can also play right back and across the right side of defence so very versatile 22 years of age of Republic of Ireland International it's no real surprise that he is attracting championship interest and like I said with Bristol City and Ipswich both interested they're both fighting it out for him and Jack Taylor but obviously as I said Ipswich have pulled out of the race to sign Taylor so Knight I would expect Derby would be very tough to keep hold of him but and Knight may not be the only midfielder that Derby are set to lose this summer as Christian Bielik is one Wanted on a permanent transfer by Birmingham City, according to reports. Obviously, the Polish international did spend last season in the championship with the Blues, where he managed 35 of games in the championship. Bielik has struggled immensely with injuries at Derby. I think two ACL injuries over the years. Obviously, had a very impressive spell in League One with my club, Charlton, in our promotion winning season. You'd imagine with the amount of games that he played with, with Birmingham in the championship last season that he won't be staying in League One next year. And if Birmingham won, in on, won him on a permanent, I'd imagine this deal would end up going through. Reportedly, the fee is believed to be around a million pounds, which obviously would be a significant loss on the amount of money that Derby did pay for Bielik. It was around, what, seven million they paid from Arsenal when they got him back in 2019. So very disappointing spell for, for Bielik, but he seems to have got himself some regular minutes at Birmingham. So if he is to make the move there, it would make a lot of sense. It was reported in the South London press a few days ago that Millwall had accepted a six-figure bid for winger Tyler Bury. Now reports have come out that it is Oxford United that are in pole position to sign the 22-year-old. His best position, as I said, is out wide. And he has had an interesting career so far with the Lions. He's had brief loan spells at AFC Wimbledon and Hartlepool. Bury has made Made 52 total appearances in the championship for Millwall, 23 of which came last season, eight starts, 16 coming off the bench. There's been a lot of speculation amongst Millwall fans that Bury has a bit of an attitude problem, so it will be interesting to see where this one unfolds. But reports are suggesting that Oxford United are the club that have made the six-figure bid and look set to get this deal over the line. As I said, his best position is out wide, but I think he can also play through the middle. So it will be an interesting signing if they can pull this one off. Oxford have been very, very busy in the transfer window so far, bringing in Ruben Rodriguez from Notts County, which is a great signing. Josh McEachran in the midfield as well from MK Dons. Another player that they seem pretty keen on at the moment is Arsenal youngster Tim Akinola, the 22-year-old impressed on loan at Chesterfield as he helped them get to the league uh, to the National League playoff final where of course they lost in the shootout to Notts County. He's yet to make a senior appearance for Arsenal and is set to be out of contract at the end of next summer. However, the player reportedly 
is favouring a move abroad amid interest from Romania, Denmark, Israel and Austria. So you'd imagine that at the moment it's not likely that Oxford can pull this one off. Andy Hughes are also interested in Brighton and Hove Albion goalkeeper James Beadle, but it has previously been reported that they are facing competition from Bolton Wanderers. However, I would imagine that that is now unlikely with Bolton very recently bringing in two new goalkeepers in Nathan Baxter from Chelsea and Joel Coleman from Ipswich. Would be an interesting signing for sure. Beadle obviously very young, 18 years of age, obviously a product of the Charlton Academy until Brighton snapped him up. He had a loan spell in the second half of last season with Crew Alexandra in League 2 where he featured nine times. So a bit unproven, especially at League 1 level, but could be an interesting pickup. And another Premier League youngster that looks set to be on the move this summer is Liverpool defender Oladare Olafunwa. I'm very sorry if I have butchered that, but the 21-year-old looks set to leave Anfield this summer on a free with Championship side Plymouth Argyle, League 1 outlet Bristol Rovers and Scottish Premier League duo St Mirren and Kilmarnock all weighing up moves. Now, I can't say I know all too much about Olafunwa, as to be honest, he is a bit of an unknown. As I said, 21 years of age, hasn't made much appearances at academy level for Liverpool and had a previous spell at Southampton. So he comes in as a bit of an unknown, but is clearly very highly rated with interest from Championship League One and Scottish clubs. Obviously, the League One club in this situation bring Bristol Rovers. So it's going to be interesting to see where this one unfolds. So that is going to wrap it up for the first episode of the League One Transfer Room Roundup for the 2023-24 season. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of the transfer rumours discussed in this video? Did I miss any rumours out that you would like me to discuss in a later video? Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned for this series because I'm going to try and get this out as much as physically possible, hopefully once or twice a week because there's going to be a lot to cover over the summer. This has been Tyler Ronaldson. Have a nice day and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe and I'll see you all then.